so before I head out, this is actually uh, something important that I should mention, because a lot of my beliefs about, especially documentary hypotheses, get horribly misunderstood. Um, they said, what about uh, Jesus when he says about the law of Moses, uh, and you believe in documentary hypothesis? Um, I don't believe that Moses didn't say any of that, um, or that he, I mean, I think Deuteronomy especially is much more accurate to what Moses did expound upon. Um, and uh, I say the Decalogue, the, the, what we know as the Ten Commandments, comes later, but not that it was uh, not known, certainly that it was not followed. I, I don't believe that at all. I think that those things were followed, and absolutely that was part of the law, um, and that the, uh, the the accounts of Moses are extremely accurate. Um, if, uh, if there's a, a writer writing about uh, World War II um, much later on, uh, does that mean that he's, he's, uh, he's inaccurate, or if somebody takes... Uh, you know, is trying to learn about Anglo-Saxon England and takes, you know, Thomas of Monmouth and these other sources and puts together and, and puts together things that can be backed up historically um, uh, and archaeologically. Is that not true then? Is that is that is that a less accurate account? I think reading um, the Torah as, or the Pentateuch, as, as it's, we know it as the Torah, um, the first five books of Moses, as one book, not even a, as separate books, but as one book, is is good. Um, and that it's only for to see the different dialogues going on there, to see the different views. Uh, I, as much as I might speak against J text and P text, I can't imagine um, I can't imagine uh, the church or my life or or civilization without them. Um, I don't think we should just rely on E and D, and I don't. I don't think we should. Tell, well, this was this writer's view, or that was there. I think that you you, you look at things differently. There's there's uh, the faithful view of things, and there's the critical view of things. Uh, the the critical his, historic um, uh, way of looking at things, and and that's never going to affect uh, religion or belief. Um, if somebody can tell me in Greek. Uh, what is it in in the Greek? What does it say? Does it say that, that Moses uh, said those things, or does it say that he wrote them? I wouldn't even have a problem with somebody saying, "Well, Jesus wrote it," I, I th or Moses wrote it. I think Jesus says, "As Moses said," um, or it, you know, they'll say, "As Moses." In, in in the translation I have, it's it's said. It's not it's not wrote. Um, which of course that's fine, but even if it said he he wrote these things, well we know he he um, he had to re t rewrite the uh, the symbols on the um, on the thing. So it didn't know what God really wrote it, and Moses copied it. It should say Moses, but he did write it. Um, he I mean he had to rewrite it, but he did write it. Um, and we know that there was some law scroll or something that he, he had written, and, and we hear about this scroll, scroll of war, and uh, that, that this doesn't document our thoughts. This is nothing to shake any of my, my view and what Christ said about, or at least the sparse things that he said about the uh, things concerning Moses. But what does he say? You've been to, you've told to uh, love your enemy, love your neighbor, and hate your enemy. Well, I tell you to love your enemy. Uh, do I think it's just Jesus' humanity that didn't know about the document? I mean, that could be an explanation, but I, I don't know that it matters. Um, it was Jesus limited by his humanity? Well, I mean, uh, of, of course, but could he at any time call upon uh, God in heaven and, and, and the angels? And aren't the angels under his submission? Absolutely. Um, I mean, he, he set he, he was the example for us, but he was also he was the greatest one to set the example. He was the creator come down in 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 human flesh. I mean, he would have burped and farted and and and, and, and evacuated his bowels when he need to and urinate. I mean, he wasn't uh, he he isn't the Gnostic Christ. He isn't the uh, the one that walks on sand and doesn't leave footprints. Now there's after the resurrection and the transfigured body, um, which is different, which, yeah, walked, you can walk through walls and stuff like that. That doesn't surprise me at all. 
but for Moses, today we're talking about the Law of Moses, which it was known as, which I don't know, that, that would absolutely be affirming. I mean, because, you know, somebody could say, oh, see, it's not the Law of Moses, it's the Law of God given during the time of Moses. I mean, they're talking about the same thing. Um, I see no, uh, I see it as a total non-issue. Um, I don't think there's anything false within any of the writers. Um, especially not if you're dealing with first century, uh, first century Herodian times. Uh, they would have been looking at the exact same copy of the Torah as that we're looking at, the Pentateuch as we're looking They're looking at the exact same thing. Because remember, it was assembled in about 500 B.C. Uh, so, of course, he would act as if it's, I mean, he would act as if it's one book. He wouldn't talk about Exodus or Genesis. I mean, it would be, it's one thing. Um, and our division of it is just because where scrolls ended. And it's not Exodus or Deuteronomy or Numbers or Leviticus or, you know, um, it's, uh, what is it, Bereshoth, I think, is the first one, and then it, it goes on. I mean, it's the correct uh, names of the books, if you want to actually translate them into the images, uh, in, into, the, into English, is Genesis would be in the beginning. So I wrote this down for when I took the uh, New Testament. So. Exodus would be, and these are the names. And Leviticus has the coolest, the coolest one, which I think is so perfect for, especially being in the wildernesses. And he called out, and you could see these are the first, uh, pretty much. Uh, the translation says, "And the Lord called unto Moses." That's at least for, um, for uh, Leviticus translated King James style. Numbers would be in the wilderness. And uh, Deuteronomy, if you were using, is these are the words. So they're not. Uh, I I I definitely don't see anything contradictory or, or anything problematic with looking at in a critical way documentary hypothesis and uh, the, anything that Christ said or even um, uh, gaining ideas in the Torah as a whole, even when. You'll see that the idea comes from a blending of E, J, and P, uh, or uh, J and P, or E, J, P, and even Redactor R. Um, I'm currently uh, going over the top. I mean, this is even much more than I than I had uh, put into the work that I that I uh, did for my own uh, my own piece of uh, document. Pods. I don't think you can't make out the uh, different. Uh, highlighter marks, but I have it marked out here as uh, these four, and then Deuteronomy will obviously be a different color, and I added things like this, and uh, so I'm kind of making up a Bible for somebody, but I'm even going into Kings and Psalms, but remember, I believe that the Holy Spirit was in the working of, of sewing these this great fabric together, so um, for a theological points, I wouldn't lean on any one author. I wouldn't. Uh, I think we need these other sides. I think that was that was that's what makes the uh, the Torah such a magnificent and beautiful and mystical thing uh, to dissect it for theological reasons. To say, well, I'm of E or I'm of P or I'm of D. Well, again, look at look at J. J is a god that is totally related to the world. P is one that's totally transcended and can't have any mercy, but yet in P it shows mercy, and, and in, in, in J it shows the transcendence of God. So, um, no, it, God meant it to be this. Well, that's the stance I take is that absolutely this is, it's still one of the most ancient living books that we, certainly the most ancient living book that we have that's been, with, with its modification, very slightly in, in the book. I mean, almost no modification or change. Um, and certainly, maybe down to point zero 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 one for the Masoretic text of how much of a change. It would just be a dot or a vowel marker, which there's no dots or vowel markers in the, in the canonical Torahs anyway, um, Torah scrolls, but... Uh, 
it's never been a problem for me. And uh, I think that leads to liberalism and liberal scholarship. And they say, oh, the, then this affects the out. Of course it doesn't. Um, how could it possibly affect any any um, theology when you know, when the um, when we're based in the new covenant to, of what that was or how Christ referred to it? Um, I don't think it. I, I'm not going to chalk it up to Jesus' ignorance as a human. I, I'm going to say that there's there's no miss, no foul in the way he presented the the laws of Moses or the Torah. That I don't. I absolutely don't see it. So it's. This is another thing that goes over my head. It's like when the rabbi asked me, should Jews become Orthodox? It's kind of one of those things where I, I, I kind of don't get the question, or, or I kind of miss it, or because I, I don't, I absolutely don't see a contradiction, and uh, I think the contradiction would have to be fabricated. We have to, something that would have to be shackled on top of this, and say, well, it's either this, or it's a false dichotomy, um, saying that you have to. You have to either choose Jesus' humanity or his divinity, or you either have to you have to choose either the Gospel of Luke or the Gospel of John. It's it's a it's a it's um it's a dividing between the two that I, I don't see, or, or or it's a false dichotomy as I see. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you about this when uh, I have time, but um, I'll, I'll catch you when I when I uh, do have time, and we'll try to go on Skype. Although I need to hit some people up first. Um, all right, take it easy. Peace to you. May God save Serbia and Syria. Those things were followed, and absolutely that was part of the law. Um, and that the, uh, the the accounts of Moses are extremely accurate. Um, if, uh, if there's a, a writer writing about uh, World War II um, much later on, uh, does that mean that he's, he's, uh, he's inaccurate? Or if somebody takes, uh, you know is trying to learn about Anglo-Saxon England and takes, you know, Thomas of Monmouth and these are documentary hypotheses. Um, I don't believe that Moses didn't say any of that um, or that he, I mean, I think Deuteronomy especially is much more accurate to what Moses did expound upon. Um, and uh, I say the Decalogue, the, the what we know as the Ten Commandments comes later, but not that it was uh, not known, certainly that it was not followed. I, I don't believe that at all. I think that. So before I head out, this is actually uh, something important that I should mention because a lot of my beliefs about, especially documentary hypotheses, get horribly misunderstood. Um, they said, "What about uh, Jesus when he says about the law of Moses?" Uh, and you believe.